Are tea leaves in there saying, I need to know something I'm about? I'm just thinking about our cold open just being silently me drinking and you writing it. <laughs> this is serious business. This is serious. Let's do this. All right. Welcome to that knitting show. I'm Ann Frost, and this is Erin. Hello. And we're here to talk about knitting stuff awesome. today. Erin, I want to start, like I always want to start, I want to start by hearing hearing about what's going on at the farm. <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> tell me so all about the Deep breath, be. because spring is the time when everything happens. So tomorrow is actually shearing, so we're going to get to give everybody their spring haircuts and pedicures, so it's like a spa day. And that's also the time where we get to get up close and, you know, check everybody out. So it's like your health checkup all in one, but right. it's enjoyable because I could use a full body massage and a mini pedi at the same time. Yeah. Especially by the time you're done shearing all those sheep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I am not actually shearing the flock. We have an awesome shearer named Aaron also, also right? Aaron. Something goes with a name. Um, <laughs> and because he shears, I can take pictures and I'm going to live stream it for the flock. So nice. the members are going to get to see that happening. So I'm really excited about Very that. Nice. And along the way, we're also skirting the wool, which is taking out any of the dirty bits and separating uh, the really good fleeces. Um, with a really good wool from the dirty bits, like the belly wool. So we'll get to process them differently uh -huh. and, and use them for different things. And then once that's done, they can go off to get washed and spun. So that starts another year. And then right after that, maybe two weeks later, is actually when we're going to be expecting lambs. So a lot's Yay! happening all at once. That's very exciting. Do you know how many lambs you are expecting? Are they going to have twins or singles? Well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, well, we I don't know. I, yeah. <laughs> Did you know? I know they tend to be twins, right, with merinos? Or am I making that Just up? in general. Twins are the most common in sheep yeah. in general. And then older ewes tend to have multiple births more often. Mm -hmm. So that's probably biology, you know, working for survival of the species. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. We'll, uh, Do merinos have triplets very often? Not very often. And we actually don't love that because there's only two spigots. Right. So lambs have to learn to share. Yeah. And um, not that they can't, but it's easier when everybody's got their own lean to, you know, work in. Yeah. So anyway, and you're a mom. Did you know where you having one or two? I did because I got scanned. So our ultrasound is more simple in uh -huh. terms of we're not getting pictures, but we're getting a yes or a no if you want to do right. that with, with sheep in most cases. And like anything, the more into it you want to get. Um, mm -hmm. but usually it's just, uh, Hey, let them do their thing. The best moms can do all of this on their own and they yeah. don't need any help or extra, uh, interference from people, Excellent. <laughs> but we're there to help if we're, if necessary. So. Awesome. That's very exciting. I love yeah. getting to go and see the lambs. So maybe, maybe we can do an episode in the barn. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Uh, mm. yeah, we'll work that out for <laughs> April for our April filming. Yeah. Okay. We could do that. That'd be, we were going to film outside today, but. I planted peas and it started snowing. That's what yeah, really happened. Yeah, spring is here. We've had like <laughs> 60 and 70 degree days, but Monday it was 20 and then like 30, 35, you know, so it's like, it's creeping back to warm, but we are not warm again yet. So we are inside again, but hopefully in the next few episodes, we will be able to be outside. I like filming outside. It's much prettier, I think. Anyway. And if a sheep rounded by, that would be okay, too. That would be wonderful. Okay. That's my favorite time is when we get to go to the the farm. Or get buzzed by a dog. Or get buzzed by a dog. Or a helicopter like that one time. Better than the porta potty truck. Because <laughs> <laughs> that did happen, too. That did happen, too. <laughs> they were building on, on we were building our property. Barn. <laughs> the porta potty truck for the workers came while we were filming. It was like, beep, beep. It was great. Sorry. You never know what you're going to get with me. <laughs> So I finished and blocked my butterfly cow. Oh, that looks awesome blocked. Ooh. So this was done with the Morehouse Merino lace. And I think I showed it in progress last time, mm -hmm. but it's actually blocked now. And I, I did take a risk doing the red that you dyed for me, which is beautiful. That wasn't the risk, but pairing it with the rainbow. Which was also kind of red. Wine, which also has red in it, but I think it worked out i think it's like a more subtle it's more mm -hmm. subtle than some of the other yeah. ones but i like it so yeah. i wanted to share that one patty also did a one in like greens and purples and gold uh -huh. and then she had a dark green that she paired it with oh, i thought nice. they were gorgeous yeah i'm i'm really happy with how it turned out so Fantastic. don't be afraid of variegated 
uh, with the butterfly cowl and using like one of the colors as the contrast. Awesome, awesome. And then I am wearing this. This is one of my finished hat cowls from the knit along that I did with Pearl Together. Uh, Jana from Pearl Together. I knit it four times. Wow. Because it is a beautifully addictive pattern. You have, this was the first one I finished. And both of these are in Uradale Farm yarn. Nice. Which is a, a Shetland yarn. So you have all of this wonderful TV knitting to start with. And then you... When you're bored with that, you have some very simple lace at the mm -hmm. bottom, and it ends up being a big, long tube that you wear doubled around your neck. Nice. And someone pointed out, hey, you don't have to you don't have to do it that long. And then someone else, you know, you could just do it as a single one. Sure. And then someone else was like, wouldn't it be cool to do it in mohair? And I was like, yes, it would be. So I went stash fuzzy. diving. Fuzzy, fuzzy. Oh. Yeah. And I have two... <laughs> Two examples here of because <laughs> why have one when you can have two? Work. Yeah, well, one of them uh, I didn't. You can see I didn't weave the ends in on either of them. So I have some tape. <laughs> yes, scotch tape to the rescue. <laughs> so this is the first one I did, and you can see um, the. So I was. Here's a tip. Here's a tip. <laughs> wait, wait. So. <laughs> Sorry, the, I'm all over. Here's a tip for working with mohair because it can be such a pain to pull out. If you have um, a lace weight mohair, if you run a lace weight wool with it as you knit mm -hmm. it, it will, if you have to pull back, it will pull out so much easier mm -hmm. than if you just knit with straight mohair. So that's what I was doing here with this gray mohair. And you can see it ended up way Oh, which one's variegated? Bigger. The gray, the mohair. Was variegated? Yeah, it's the... black and gray. And then mm -hmm. I ran it with a black you can see the black wool right oh, there. Got it. But it ended up way too bulky because this mohair um, is from at least 20 years ago. Like more than 20 years ago mohair. This is old school mo mohair that I got from my mother's stash. Nice. This middle blue here, this middle blue here is a modern mohair. And the difference between the two is... Like night and day. You can see how much longer the fibers are on this old school mohair compared to that little, like you almost can't even tell that that modern mohair is mohair. Um, and I had to, I had to double the modern one and it still wasn't as thick as the hmm. old one. And they're both classified as lace weight. So. Well, I think that like what, what the preparation and spinning technique gives you for a halo Right, varies from yeah. from even mill to mill. I mean, like, if we get lace weight yarn done from two different mills, they're not going to be right. the same yarn, even though they are technically the same weight. But you'll notice a difference if you hold them side by side. Yeah. And the, the I don't know if people know, many people know this, but the, this mohair, this style of mohair, a lot of people have also seen the mohair that has the loops. So you have, like, a lace weight strand, and then you have, like, loops on mm -hmm. it. That's the same stuff. They just open up those loops to get this fuzziness to it. Um, so also the size of those loops and the processing can affect how long and crazy the the mohair is. So, but it's a it's an an example of how preferences for from knitters has changed since we've you know been doing this. So anyway, this I wasn't in love with this. I will eventually weave in the ends and I'll probably donate it somewhere. Um, I also thought that the like it's too much mohair to have like right against your face. Well, I don't know if you're planting peas and it's snowing, you might want it. You might want it. <laughs> so I did it one more time. Oh, this time I did not run the wool. I wasn't worried about pulling out the mohair. I I had knit it enough times, so I thought it was going to be okay. And then instead of doing the four inches to start with, I just did um, three rows, which is how many you end with. So it's more centered. Cow the cow. More, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the one. And I like this one. And I'm probably going to keep it. One of these will probably go as a Christmas gift. I haven't decided yet. Mm -hmm. Or I might just keep it and knit another one. Plenty of so, time. Yep. Fantastic. So these were these were just stash, stash busting mm -hmm. projects. Um, I mean, technically these were two because I had all the Uradale. And honestly, this one was too because I used leftovers from our lace projects. All of this was Stash Buster yarn. I'm so proud of me. Good job. That's that.
trend is about to be shattered. But we'll talk about that later. Well, yes. Have yarn will travel. Yeah. Or must and, travel. And festivals. Have travel will yarn. Festivals are yep. coming up. Yep, yep. Okay, Erin, so what have you finished? What have I finished? Well, I always have a bunch of things going on, right? Um, I was talking with uh, Lean Dreesen, and she's got some neat classes that she was taking or t teaching, so we were planning on a few. And then she turned me on to some two-color brioche designs that she was working on. I don't know if I say the designer's name right. Uh, Katrine or Katrine Schubert? Anyway, okay. so I was just looking through her designs. They're gorgeous. If you like brioche, you're going to love these. And I was thinking of a few more samples to knit up for Maryland. Um, and I ran across this one. It's called the Peace Lily. And Lovely. first, this pink is just kind of like attracted me. I, I don't know why. I'm not usually that much of a pink person. I know um, you aren't either. But your sweater turned out so beautifully. Maybe that's where it was coming here. from. I got pink in yeah. here too. So look at this design. Oh, that's much closer or much more visible up close <laughs> and it looks like brioche yeah and yeah it's all knit and pearl how it's cool ribbing. how it's cool is that ribbing very nice so she's got three different sizes in this i just uh, you know whipped up the small one so that i could get it done because i wanted to see what it looked like and i really like it and i think it would you know certainly benefit from a blocking i'm just you know showing up with it here because i it was my evening experiments right but just what a different take with one skein of a worsted weight yarn or an Aran weight yarn, which conveniently is something we got a lot of. I know. I want to touch it some more. We talked about this in our last episode, and I'm just so glad you brought more because I love it. I know. And look how much this one matches you. I'm just... It matches me. <laughs> it matches... Doesn't it match Anne? I mean, it also matches her cowl, but <laughs> it like matches your lipstick. Oh, so. I really like this one. Yeah. Am I crazy? Okay. Well, now you have a chance to name them. Okay, this one is the Hamburglar. Okay, you put that in. You put that in our uh, <laughs> name collections, and then we'll put it onto a it's vote. Not, it's not really the Hamburglar. No, I don't want people to get. He's way more like bluey purple. It's more like grimace purple. Rubble, rubble. Um, that just dated us. This one is strawberry sherbet. I want to name them all sherbet colors. Sherbet, sherbet. Okay, pop them in. Yeah, because the naming contest continues. If you go over to the Morehouse Farm website, morehousefarm.com, there is a link on the homepage there to the Glenlee Yarn Lines. And it's a new yarn that you have. And 12 colors? Yes. 12 colors. They all need names. And so there's a place there. You see all the pictures. And then there's 12 places for you to put in the names. And if they win, if you pick that name, what happens? You're going to get a skein of you that get a color. Skein. Yeah. You get a skein. And you get a skein. So how, how, is the, how, is the, how are the names going to be chosen? All right. Because I got so much going on. We're going to do one a week. So we do this okay. and we do this well. So we're going to pick one color each week. And I've given them ear tag numbers. Because this oh. is how you tell your flock apart, right? right. So sheep have earrings. Yeah. And in that earring, there is a number. And that right. number on our farm tells us what year the sheep was born. And what number in sequence it was born. So this year, 2201 would be the first lamb born. Mm -hmm. So we're doing the same thing with these yarns so that we can have a way to refer to them while we're awaiting their names. Perfect. Right? So we get back into the complications of naming, you know, lambs or babies before they're, they arrive or not. <laughs> anyway, so each week we're going to focus on a color. We're going to say, hey... And what do you think this color should be called? And everybody who's on our email list, you're welcome to participate. In fact, we invite you to because one of the things that uh, actually Ted, one of our great customers, pointed out was, I love how well the Morehouse color names tell me generally what this looks like before I even pick it up. Yeah. Right. So you had suggested a Sherbert color for yeah. this. And if you say that, a lot of people will have an idea that it's a more of a citrusy rather than a bold or jewel tone mm -hmm. of that and that the other the, you know whatever fruit you picked would then sort of say it's more towards a red as opposed to a green or a purple so that I think is really sort of a neat tradition to carry yeah. on because you can see that and you know there's some really neat color names out there um, especially if people get into speckles and all the other things that they're dying um, I have to see it to know what it talks about though right. and that's just a little different than how we we have done things so anyway be thinking and we have had a couple of people more than a couple of people say glenley that's scottish right and glenley is actually the name of one of those two super fine rams that margaret and albrecht 
brought to the U.S. So I'm going to see if I can find that on my phone. You know what? I'll just give you a picture. You can pop okay. in here. That'll be <laughs> easier. But Albrecht has drawn us a yarn label because I'm slowly working yes. on the idea of, hey, it would be great if these things came with, you know, not instructions, mm -hmm. but just identification, like the ear tag. Great. So um, for now, they're going to have those numbers. And each week for the next 12 weeks, we're going to have you suggest names and then we'll put it to a vote. You suggest names for the next one, put it to a vote. Perfect. And whoever suggests the winning name is going to get a skein of that colorway. And then you too can make a hat. Yeah, so this is a third one, right? Do you have any yeah. more of them? Uh, I think today? that's all I brought today. Okay. So three colors. The last yeah. episode had some others. Yes, I was wearing um, blues and greens that right. were in. That uh, was three of the colors. Yep. And then you had like an orange. There's a couple of oranges. There's a, a light yellow. Oh, there's a mango-ish color. The is, mango one. is Was one suggestion. And um, it really is that color. I so. think between this episode and last episode, you'll... You can see. You've seen more than half of them anyway. Yeah, you've definitely seen yep. more than half. And they yeah. feel so nice. Oh. And what's neat really about these is um, the way these are spun, they have just a little bit extra stitch definition. So you were talking about the, like, the extremes of this, the halo of mohair versus the... Um, more rustic Shetland wools. Mm -hmm. Like, look at the stitch definition on those. So just with a little bit of sp spinning technique Whoops. difference. Oh, gosh. Got a jumper. Don't oh. drop it on the floor, oh, Anne. Got a jumper. So just with a little bit of spinning technique difference and the staple length here, we've got a very loosely spun yarn, but one that has really good stitch definition, as, as you, you can, can see. see. Yeah, wonderful. So anyway, I'll just... So many that's things exciting. to get. So that's like a fun, a fun little contesty thing going on. I know, and get it out of the hands. Like some more. We had one lady order. I was just, I was just really excited. It was a very nice order. Thank you very much. And uh, I can't wait to knit shawls with these. Each of my friends are getting one. And you know, three, four colors makes an awesome shawl yeah. and a big shawl. So I'm like, I'm thinking ahead. It's just so inspired, right? <laughs> like you're knitting gifts, other people yeah. are knitting gifts. It's Marchish as we're yeah. filming this, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about some shawls in a little bit. Yeah, we have a special shawl project coming up to share with you. Um, so you all you have another project over there that you were gonna share with us. I did because this is what's coming. Share coming it. Up in the floor. Look at him! <laughs> Isn't he cute? <laughs> it's an entrelac sheep. Isn't that adorable? So, so cute. So I decided that it was a good time to refresh on Entrelac and you know how I like to teach myself things, figure them out. And the thing that I added this time at the suggestion of the author, because this can be found in the book, Norwegian Hand Knits. Mm. And we've got uh, Sue Flanders and Janine Koso. And uh, Sue was kind enough to write back to me when I asked for permission mm -hmm. to use this as a class. So grab your book. We're going to do this in the Morehouse Merino flock. And what I noticed with this, and Sue suggested it as well, if you learn to knit in the other direction as well, not only is Entrelac a whole lot more fun because you don't have to keep turning your work. And these are little squares that are five, six stitches across. And think about knitting turning around to pearl, knitting, turn around to pearl, five or six mm -hmm. stitches. You're, you're, you're just going to give your, right. make your sheep dizzy. But if you can knit in both directions, which is not as hard as it might seem, this is a skill that I am already putting to work in another project. I'll show you any place you have a lace or applied edging. That's only five or six or 10 stitches wide. Oh, game changer worth learning. Yeah. So if you want to come along with us and you would commit two hours to learning to knit in the other direction, you're gonna. Get I, don't, I mean, you say two hours. I don't. I don't think it even takes that long to see the beauty and brilliance of learning how to knit in the other direction. No, but like just to get yeah. comfortable with it. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's. It was a game changer. Totally. So I'm super it. excited about. It. And isn't this adorable? Like it's I so cute. Decided. I think I'm gonna embroider a face. Him, and then we need a, col a couple of different colors. So I'm just thinking like oh, this compared with a green. That would be fun. So you were saying this is going to be, this will eventually be a Morehouse yes, Merino flock group project, but you're going to work up to it. Yeah, because I'm finding that as I'm learning this myself, it would be easier to take it in pieces. You know, I think we get so excited and we tend to dive in as adventurous knitters. Mm -hmm. If I spent the time to work on the knitting in the opposite direction, those are going to be two sessions and just come along and practice with us in our knit and unwind times. Yeah. Then we're also going to do an entrelac notions case because 
this becomes a little more complicated, not just that we're knitting in the round, which actually is the fine part of it, but you need to be able to connect the squares in different ways top. on the top. And then as you're knitting around the body, bring that into a smaller circumference and knit the squares in a different order for the neck. And if we've got the entrelock part down and don't have to think about right. that, putting the rest of these things together is an, is not yeah. hard. But it's kind of like learning to drive a stick shift while eating an ice cream and changing the station <laughs> on the radio. Like, you just don't have enough hands right away. Like, I already know how to eat the ice cream. I got that part down. Okay, so then let's add part number two. Let's add the radio. But not... And then we'll add the shifting. Yeah, like not two, <laughs> not two three, and four. All right, right. You, you got, you're on the clutch side. I'll, I'll yeah. left hand shift. <laughs> Perfect. So, so anyway. don't don't look at that and be like totally intimidated. There's no way we will get you there. Yeah, because step by step progress. Look at these little ears. Other. It's so cute. And the the coolest thing about this is there's nothing on this that you don't know how to do already. Yeah, it's the combinations of putting them together. So look at these little ears. They are knitting with an applied eye cord edge. Oh, perfect. And then there's a little join for a Kitchener, which I know you have learned a new join that you're in love with. Yeah. I don't think it would work there, but yeah. But like in learning these. It works where it works. You, you use the one that works. I have started thinking about Kitchener in a different way, right? Mm -hmm. When you, all the instructions are knit on, pearl off, or some version of that. Mm -hmm. And in the flock, we go through why you need that and where because the way of the way the stitch is positioned. But if you think about the way a knit stitch is aligned, right? You go through the front hole, the loop comes up on the top, and then out through the stitch right where is that yarn positioned when, when you're making that loop and the bar that connects them when you're knitting is always behind the two yeah, stitches so, you, so if you can start thinking much. about that any which way the knitting appears to you Kitchener is all of a sudden a no-brainer so when I've got this I-cord edging that I'm wrapping around the edge of his ear and I've got three stitches you know that are kind of like in this shape that's no biggie because I know where the I want my bars to be connecting. Nice. So I'm like, I wasn't even looking at anything. I just started poking spatial, my needle in and spatial and look, awareness. Can you even see where I joined him? Oh, no, no, actually, like when you said there was a join, I was like, what, really? Because I would have thought you just like sew it on, but you have it hidden. Very nice. I'm get better at this. Yay! So anyway, so, get the book. Yeah, and why don't you go ahead and tell us what's on your needles where you're using the knitting backwards. Why don't you uh, yes, show yes. us that one? Okay, so this actually came courtesy of, I think, Woolwide Adventures. Oh, is that So, Lynette Meek. Uh-huh. This is called Rhiannon, and it is a okay. gorgeous beaded shawl that she had done in, I think, silk. Oh, well, Wolvember. Wolvember! Oh, November golly. Like, I don't even we remember. We met Lynette, yeah. So, I bought one of her patterns. And started this gorgeous Can you see it piece. In the thing? So I think I showed you the skein of Morehouse lace yarn that I was going to use because it's unusual to use uh, variegated for lace, but you can see that up close and it looks a lot prettier than it does on the camera. <laughs> the colors anyway. She starts this brilliant design with a square. And by the way, this is why Erin is not allowed or will never be an influencer because there's a giant square in the middle of the back, which... Oh, you can see that against you can see the white it. wall. Yeah, oh, there you go. Oh, look at that. That looks really well. Yep. Okay, there's your square. So you can see it there. The, there's and a point to the bottom. So the square actually covers your back, and then there's a wing out each side that'll come across the shoulders. And in a, putting on this applied edging, going back and forth five, six, eight stitches, like this has been a game changer. I love doing this. You're, you're even closer. Perfect. So there you go. The edging. And look at how even it's getting to be now that I'm practicing it. Yeah. So this edging here is normally you're having to turn back and forth. Right. But you can do the lace knit out and then knit in reverse back. And because it's reversed, depending on if you're on the right wing or the left wing, I'm actually SSK knitting two together and doing yarn overs in the opposite direction. Wow. You're pro. Well, I'm practicing, this right? Like, pro. Yeah. Practice. Stitches Practice under your it. stitches under your needles, right? Miles under your belt or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, Excellent. so I'm excited about that, and I hope to have that off the needles and on a mannequin at one of the upcoming shows. Yeah, we have. Yeah, you have several shows coming up. We're going to talk about that later. 
All right. I'm going to show my lace yeah, what are you working that I've been working on. So I've been taking a class with Elizabeth Williamson mm -hmm. online. She is known for her Shetland lace design. Um, and this is, oh, let me get, sorry, I'm getting all my ends in the right direction so I can show you. So this is what we have so far. Um, so. It looks like a bird. Kind of, huh? So t I have to knit one more sec of these sections mm -hmm. for Friday, which as we're filming that is two days away. I better get on it. Um, so, uh, so here. I think we talked a little bit about this on our last episode. So you started here with the back and forth like edge. So this, you know, was knit this way and then picked up along, picked up along the edge here. Mm -hmm. And then we knit the border, this section up to here and then knit also this part here, this middle rectangle part. These two sections here we're knit as the back and forth lace edging and then picking up the, uh, and knitting the border. Mm -hmm. But then you had to join them on. On to, this edge. Yep. So, so this, this and edge and this edge. Are these three of the same thing? Yes. That then get attached to the center? Yes. On but a different this side. one, this one was actually knit on. Okay. And these two were attached on. And that attachment is the cool thing. Um, a lot of the lace knitters would use basically like a Kitchener mm -hmm. or they had another way of doing it. There's actually lots of ways to do it. The, this way is called the Betsy join and it's probably the easiest I have ever witnessed. And you get, if I pull it apart here, that row of circles going oh, straight like little down. Narrowers. That's what you end up with as you do the join. So I'm just going to say it ends up, you you end up knitting a row and taking it right off your needles with your, with your um, darning needle, and that's it. Hmm. You don't have to be like in through this way, out through that way. It is, it was so easy, um, and I'm not going to tell you how to do it because there's only a handful of people where this is their indigenous way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And they are teaching lessons on it. And so because it is so small, I feel like I'm not the one to spread that. I encourage you to find Elizabeth Williamson or another teacher who um, is passing this along and uh, take the class. It's very awesome. It's a really great class. So tomorrow or Friday, uh, I will have another one of these. We will do the join here. And then also we're going to use the join to join up the diagonals. Too. It can be used on in all of those ways. So I'm very excited for that. Learning how to do that. Very cool. I hope yeah. to take that that class because those are all just great things to have in your toolbox. Yeah. As is repairing brioche, which I just noticed I have a uh -oh. Oh, random yeah. drop stitch. But Oops. I know how to do this now. But you'll know how to do it, so it'll be okay. Yes, I just was looking for something to mark it, so I'm not oh. going to undo anything. Do you I'm, want me to grab a stitch marker for you? Do you have one close by? Yeah. Okay. Crisis averted? Well, it was more just like a... Hey, this is where your problem is, right? Later on. <laughs> Make sure you Pay see attention. It. Pay attention. So I have one more thing to show off that's on my needles. Like I said, I don't have a lot of my needles right now because I finished up a bunch of these cowls. I've got this class going on and I'm about to leave on vacation. So I do have some projects set aside to take on vacation, like little packable projects. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to do it. Oh, no, I started a round. Or I'm not quite done with a round, so I can't quite well, open can it up. But this is... Why don't you finish, and then you can show the whole thing. Well, because I have to join my yarn. Oh. Do you have something you can talk about? I can talk about something for a few minutes. Okay, so what you I'm talk about something, I'm going to join my yarn. So I can... <laughs> <laughs> so this one is not... This one, I'm in the same place, but it works out. I am working on a test knit for Maroon Melchior of a... This is going to be a shrug. And what's so awesome about Maroon is she... She just comes up with these amazing color combinations that I would never think of. And then I went in a different direction with mine. But she's really, really good. She's the, and she's really, really good about thinking of design and color placement. So this is going to be reversible. And this is brioche in uh, light fingering, which we call Morehouse Lace. Now, why would we call that? Well, back in the day when we started putting yarns out there, meaning we started raising sheep, which is going to be... Um, 40 years next year. Wow. Yeah. There was no standard name. So if that's what the mill spun and they called it lace, that's what you got. Mm -hmm. So this beauty is 
um, named after and colors after the Monet water lilies painting, which I find absolutely gorgeous. But you can see it will match up with whatever light fingering weight yarn you have. Seven to eight stitches to the inch on a one, two, or three. Right? That's mm -hmm. a pretty standard weight. And it matches up amazingly. We were just holding it side by side with some of the, the Shetland is, yeah. light fingering that you were holding. Same thickness. It was the same. So don't be scared by the name. And it works up into not only an amazingly light and warm fabric, but really airy. I mean, look at this. This is the Saratoga shawl. And... So pretty. Knit, purl, yarn over, knit two together, all the stuff you know how to do. And, you know, now that conference calls are still happening and you might have to go places, but car knitting, train knitting, plane Perfect. knitting, whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. So anyway, really excited about, about that because this one is going to take about 1,300 yards She was what she was mm -hmm. estimating. And because we've got so many different color combinations, we've also got different uh, skein sizes so if you don't want to have to join anything this is 440 yards that's amazing all at once a shawl like this will take 880 we have that size in some of these pretty cool variegated this no one's joins. called uh three poplars also after the monet painting and then we also have the single skeins they're just shy of one ounce so 25 grams right because that conversion is not exact mm -hmm. And uh, in so many different colors, this one's called Pacific, just this gorgeous blue. Also, I'm well, like coordinating with you without even planning it. <laughs> At 225 in each of these. So off you go, right? Four of these Perfect. makes one of these or get the big skein if you don't want to have to worry about joining yeah. anything. But, you know, it's not super wash, so you could just spit splice. You just spit splice. Love, love, love. I'm a spit splicer myself. All right. And not only did you just join your yarn. You're done with your row. So I did you show yeah, that off. My row. So this is the burra shawl. Burra? Burra. Burra. Or I would say bruff. B-R-O-U-G-H. But it's from Scotland. So it's okay. burra. The burra, burra. shawl. Burra. burra. So this is designed by Donna Smith Designs. It was in the Shetland Wool, Shetland Wool Adventures number one. Mm -hmm. So you can get it there. She also sells it as a kit, which is how I got it. Or you can just buy the pattern now um if you have it from your shetland wool adventures journal there is errata for it so check the website and get the errata for it um, i would also strongly recommend you get it in a digital format if you are interested in it because um, the charts are very helpful and it helps to use like a knit companion or something to help you follow along mm. so keep all that in mind good advice but this is it so you start down here at the point which is all curled up right now but it'll block flat um, and then you have this leaf pattern going up both sides and then eventually you start doing a cat's paw in the middle Aww. and the leaf, I like, I seriously love the texture of the leaf pattern just as it is. But you know, when it's time, I will block that flat so that it's, you know, all spread out like it's supposed to, but I'm just really enjoying it as I'm knitting it right now. So this is in day, uh, DK it's in, uh, Donna's, uh, Lang Soon yarn, which is um, from her flock of Shetland sheep, sheep that were uh, raised there in Shetland. This is one of the natural colors. Donna is very well known for her dyeing. So she has gorgeous colors of her yarn available on her website. And this is after two balls. And the kit has two more hanks. But of course, because it's triangular, each ball ends up using about giving you yeah. about half as much length as the one before. So, so I'm it's like, deceiving. yeah. So I'm like, man, I have two more balls left, but that's only going to add maybe another, maybe a foot, maybe yeah. 10 yep. inches uh, of it. And it ends up being a really big, like warm. Cool. Shawl. So I'm hoping to have this done by May for when we go to Shetland. So I can wear it right. then. I'm very excited about it. So my other hoping to have that done, because I'm mm -hmm. actually going along, is Gosh, this is a test ready. knit that I'm doing for Latonia Rich. And it's her first original design. So I am taking the long way in that I am knitting front and back at the same time, two at a time, one, so they always match. Uh huh. And uh, then by the time I'm done, I won't have to go, oh, got to get back to the back. Right. But <laughs> because they are similar, that's pretty easy. This is a lace design. I'm actually using the yarn that you picked out on one of our episodes. I know. I just love that green. 
and uh, that'll be perfect. For I think we talked about this last time too for spring, but I was just I'm showing that I'm with it. making making it. progress because yeah. I'm loving it as well. And it doesn't look like as much, you know, these lace designs just tend to sort of, you know, it's almost like they're in a cocoon when they're. Uh, in the skein and then they're they're slowly coming out of it when they're on the needles and yeah. then once you block and them block it. Oh. so we've shown you a whole bunch of what margaret always called ugly ducklings right like <laughs> especially the way i yeah, did it this is going to be dramatically different right because here's erin and, and again why erin can never be an influencer because she likes to knit efficiently on one round needle and you know have as little <laughs> gear going on travel as lightly as possible but if i say hey this is a big shawl and you look at it go i don't mm -hmm. see it erin so just wait. I will finish it. It will be beautiful. And then we will look at it. It will be beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So we have we have a lot of stuff coming up. It's spring. Like you were saying, it's spring. And so that means like the farm is going to go through a really busy season. Mm -hmm. But it's also like COVID is ending. It's getting warmer out. Festivals are coming back. People are traveling. So we have a ton of stuff coming up. So you're out to Iceland. To doing it. I'm going to Iceland. And by the time this comes out, I will be in Iceland. Uh, going with my husband, hoping to have two interviews while I'm there um, of people, not of me. No one wants to hear from me. I'm going to Not true. I just people. saw Amy Snell shared the Devious oh, Knitter. Yeah, she re, Wouldn't it she be fun? That. Yeah. yeah. So I was on the Devious Knitter podcast several months ago. Cool, cool. Um, so that's coming up. Uh, the, the podcast, my podcast, I Thought I Knew How, is actually... Uh, going on hiatus there's one more episode coming out unless you're a patron you already have it um, but the one more episode coming out it's going to be about cotton and uh, then the the podcast is going on hiatus until June but during that time I'm actually going to be interviewing a bunch of people for when the episodes come back um, we have the Mac and our way through Shetland tours mm -hmm. that you are coming on the first fair aisle one. So that's going to be the middle of May mm -hmm. coming up. Very excited about that. Um, one thing to keep in mind, this, this um, we're recording earlier, but by the time this is out, Jolene and I decided to add one more week of the tours in September. So that's going to be another fair aisle week. It will run from September 4th to September 11th. And so far, we've just been reaching out to uh, people who are on the wait list to mm -hmm. get on the four weeks we already announced. And we've contacted everyone. So we're going to take it public now. So if you are interested in joining us uh, on, on that tour, uh, take a look at I thought I knew how.com slash Shetland and you can get start getting the information there and click over. Uh, we, it's about half full already. And that's wow. before, you know, it goes public. Shetland Wool Week is happening. They finally <laughs> announced it. I thought I got an email so like, hey, excited. they'll be a pattern in May. I'm so excited. So if you are a fan of Shetland Wool Week, like I am a fan of Shetland Wool Week. Um, yes, as Erin said, the, the hat for this year is coming out in May. And when they announced the new patron, that is a little later than normal. But, you know, they're trying to figure out with the COVID situation what to do with everything. So everything's happening a little later than typical. But that's okay. We're excited. We're looking forward to it. Thank you, organizers, for deciding to do that. And I'm going to be teaching a class along with uh, Vivica of Uradale Yarns that is designed specifically for Fair Isle beginners, and it will be online. So even though it's meeting in person, we've decided to do it online. So even if you can't come to Shetland, you can still be part of Shetland Wool Week, get that beginner lesson and then if you're there you're mm -hmm. welcome to take the class too we've decided to keep it online because you'll be able to see what i'm doing much better because mm. i can have a camera right on what i'm doing and then vivica for her part of the lessons she gives a wonderful talk about shetland dialect and how she's a linguist and how as a linguist they can use um the the dialect words that knitters have preserved in their knitting activity to study the dialect as a whole. It's, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating. And then in the, it's a two part class in the second part class, she sort of takes us on a tour of the farm and tells us about some of their organic farming practices. So it's, it's a fascinating mm -hmm. class. So that's coming out. Cool. Um, also I am putting together a 31 day advent style box to lead up to 
New Year. So rather than being Christmas or Hanukkah themed or, or like that, it's going to be New Year themed box. It's going to be the Sh the Shetland Hogmanay box because Hogmanay is what they call New Year's Eve mm -hmm. in Scotland. It will feature yarn from seven of the wool producers there in Shetland, plus a pattern for each of those yarn producers yarned, mm -hmm. plus some gifts from some of the makers who are up there. So details on that is, are going to come out on in early May. So make sure you're either on my mailing list or following me on social media uh, to get in on that because um, I can only get so many of the supplies here. So there is a limited number of boxes. So you want to make sure to spring if that's something you're going to want. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to be at Connecticut Sheep Wool and Fiber Festival on it's April 30th. Happening. It's happening. We're very excited. And we have an idea on what we're going More to do for that. More dangerous words have never been spoken. Right? We have an idea. <laughs> so here's our idea. Come if you are in the area, even if you're not in the area, come on. Anyway. Yeah, take we'll, a ride. We'll welcome you. Take a ride. Um, so that's in North Haven, Connecticut, and I'll put a link down below. Yep. Um, come by. April 30th. April 30th. Uh, have a look. We are thinking we would like to knit a Rhinebeck shawl this year. So Erin is going to have a lot of the Morehouse shawls there. You can come take a look at them in person, decide which one you want to knit, and pick up the yarn and pattern for them while you're there. And then very low-key work on it. And then at Rhinebeck... Uh, They're going to be sightings. There will be sightings. We will be looking for you and looking for you to look for me. So we're going to have a time at the at the Morehouse booth at Rhinebeck where I will be there. So you can come find me there wearing your Rhinebeck shawl and I will have a little something for you. Okay. Or if you see me out and about at Rhinebeck on another time, you can stop me and say, hey, this is the Morehouse whatever shawl. Or should we include shawls that they knit in Morehouse that... Is it different from a different designer? Hmm. Oh, still to be determined, right? I would love to see any of these amazing yarns to, with whatever... Uh, with whatever, whatever design can be. you want. Yeah. yeah. And... And if... You, anyway, if you catch me, I'll give you a little something there, too. So, so instead of... A, if sweaters... The idea of a Rhinebeck sweater is intimidating, you can do a shawl. A shawl. I wear shawls way more than I wear sweaters. So I'm more likely to do a mm -hmm. shawl. So I need to decide which one I'm going to do. Got to get on the side. Oh, man, it's lot. not in your plan already? <sighs> I'm a planner, but I haven't planned that far. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some days, just today is enough of just, <laughs> on the plan. Just Got to get on the plane in a few days. That's as far as I planned. <laughs> How so much yarn will fit in my suitcase? You were saying something and I interrupted. Do you remember what you were saying? No. Didn't plan that far. <laughs> Didn't plan that far. <laughs> Anyway, so that's a lot of stuff coming up. I'll have links down below. Uh, but as you can see, things get busy. Things, I mean, it's funny because you think of knitting as like a wintertime activity. Oh, spring so much. Because but it's spring and summer, man, there's stuff going on. Check your local area and see what you have going on. I bet you have something going on. So for those of you in the Mid-Atlantic region, Maryland Sheep and Wolf Festival yes. is also actually happening. And we have a booth. Beginning gonna, of May. First weekend of May, right? Right, 7th and 8th. First weekend of We're May. We're going to be in the main exhibition hall, which is the big building at the bottom of the hill. So come by and visit, right? We haven't been to Maryland in a number of years. In fact, yeah. little known fact, I skipped my college graduation to go work at Maryland for Margaret and Albrecht. Wow. <laughs> Yep, yep. Same weekend. What are you going to do, yeah. right? Priorities. We were just talking about yeah. that. And, and uh, same thing. You can go get your shawl stuff there, too. She'll still have the displays yes, yes. of the shawls and stuff there, yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah. looking so forward to that. Exciting. And uh, knitting furiously on this. I'm brioching while I'm talking. How about that? That's I skill. Yep, that so. is definitely skill. Now I know where i got to go fix my mistake. So uh. yeah, I have more safety pins. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I got that one. I just didn't get back to it yet. Because um, this is growing as, as it's going. But I'm stoked about this because... I think just, you know, for a summer weight, something that's not taking forever yeah, is pretty amazing. I mean, this is just a couple of hours in. And when you're considering what small size needle I'm using and fine yarn, the our lace weight, I just feel that. 
And what did you say the bottom looked like? It reminded me of TV static, but like in a good way, you know, just that like, like how do you, yeah. How do you approach that? That's so So, fun. Anyway. And reversible too. Nice. I, I think we better go start packing. I know. (laughs) Well, so I'm thinking about like our upcoming episodes. So hopefully next time we're going to have the lambs. Mm -hmm. And then, so that would be the one that airs in May. Mm Mm-hmm. And then the one that airs in June, we've talked about maybe doing while we're in Shetland. Yes. That'd be fun. So we have some fun, this that knitting shows yeah. coming up on for you way. as well. I'm, I'm doing lots of hand. <laughs> this is a sign for fun stuff coming up. <laughs> okay, guys. Are we are we done? Is that everything we have I, to talk about? I think so. Well, We're like coming out of a quiet time going into a hectic time. Yes. So it's like, this might be a little shorter than normal, but... Not next time. Next time it's going to be busy. That's right. We're going to like have to do a reel of just like picture, 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 <laughs> picture. <laughs> okay. What's the next thing coming up? The oh, next- I forgot. Oh, oh. April. There's April. also the Interweave Yarn Fest. Oh, yeah. In, uh, in Loveland, Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. Are you going out for that? I am. <gasps> oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And so I have I a couple of listeners who are going to be there. Yeah. So oh, um, I'm going to be taking, Aaron. I'm going to be taking uh, double knitting off the grid. Awesome. With Elster Post Quinn. Really looking Very forward cool. to that. Because yeah. Some awesome yarns for double knitting. Right. So uh, I'm going to play around with that. And uh, yeah, just be looking around. So see, hopefully I'll that's see some of you there. Yeah. So say hi if you see Aaron. But I think I think that's really all now. Maybe. We I'm say? sure we forgot something, but. We probably did. Oh, well. Next if time. I, if I forgot, I'll put it like as a scroll. If we think of something like a sp- Star Wars scroll right Yeah, I was thinking a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> okay, guys. Have an excellent April, and we will see you in May. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>